the Boda Boda explosion. Just why is the government unable to regulate this industry? And safety on the roads. Speed cameras now expose the rogue drivers. <laughs> Plus, Jubilee reacts to rigging claims by the Cord Alliance. Security lapses. Has Kenya really learned from past mistakes? KTN Weekend Prime with Yvonne Okwara. It is the 19th of January 2014. A very warm welcome to our bulletin tonight. We thank you so much for joining us. It is Sunday, so that means it is checkpoint. And tonight, we will be taking a look at the appointments once again, this time with the release of a survey that talks about the percentages of uh, the different representation from the different areas within the appointments that have been made by the Uhuruto administration in the last nine months. We'll be taking a look at that, and we will be discussing discussing that and seeing how do we really make these appointments equitable is it even possible so please do remember to join us from 9 30 for that and uh, you can start uh, texting and tweeting in the twitter handle is at Yvonne Okwara at KTN Kenya you can also text us the number is 22155 in addition we'll also be having an interview here we will be speaking about the banning of the film the wolf of wall street and three others by the way that's not the only film that's been banned we'll be seeking an understanding of why that was done, how the decision was arrived at. So any questions you have also regarding that, they will be addressed when we speak to a film officer from the Kenya Film Classification Board. All of that in this bulletin. But first, let's get to the top stories this evening. And we are focusing on the issues of Boda Boda and we all know that they have become a familiar sight across the country, drawing appreciation and detest almost in equal measure. Yes, we are talking about the motorcycles or boda bodas as they are commonly known. Unfortunately, lack of proper regulation of the sector has led to chaos on our roads. Sharon Momani now reports on what is turning out to be a vicious cycle of these wheels of death. A ride atop a boda boda is one that many Kenyans have experienced either at that point when it provided the convenience of speed by avoiding traffic jams or traversing routes not served by commercial passenger vehicles, maybe cheaper or perhaps just simply as a preferred choice of transport. There appears to be an explosion of border borders across the country, clustering at what we could call border border stops and waltzing through the streets. But with that has also come many problems. In Kakamega town, the police deal with a lot of cases of unlicensed operators. Wandeshaji wa pikipiki sana sana kwa sababu wengi wao wamegraduate kutoka baiskili. Wanaona kama kwamba kuendesha pikipiki ni kama ile tu kuendesha baiskili. Mtu anaenda kwa sababu anajua ile eh, kustabilize ile pikipiki, namna vile ana stabilize eh, 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 baiskili bila kujali kwamba usito ya pikipiki ni tofauti na ile ya baiskili. The border border business seemingly lucrative for young entrepreneurs and job seekers, so much so that the crucial factor that the business involves balancing the lives of passengers on two wheels is sometimes lost on the operators. What we talk about here from four to nine, well, we are saying what is what is the buying of the angle picky picky and going to result result. So that's why every year, what we are going to say. Now, when we appear, we are we are watching some cars in Kwaindi, you know. Mtu aneza jifunza leo, nataka pesa. Na kama tungekua na mpangilio serikali tusaidie, kukua na kama kupoka dogo hivi. Kama elifu kutano, elifu kumi. Alafu haina interest. Sunona hapo watu mtu atachukua ende driving, at least apate ka license. With unskilled border border operators on the roads, coupled with a growing number of users, the motorcycles are increasingly turning into wheels of death. 
so rampant are cases of border border accidents that the Jaramogi Oginga Odinga Referral Hospital in Kisumu has actually set aside a ward specially for these victims. Most of the most of the the injuries are usually fractures. Those that are unfortunate to get fractures of this of the skull, that is the bone that covers the head and the brain, usually die. We normally receive around uh, four patients per week and uh, this one translates um, roughly to 16 patients per per month and you see when you translate this to a year these are quite a lot of patients huh? these are patients now who will be in the ward for at least a minimum of uh, 10 weeks so you can see it putting a, a patient in the ward for 10 weeks that is a, a loss of economic uh, times. But health and lives are not the only risk that have come with the border border invasion. The economic performance of counties are also impacted. At the moment, there are no regulations in place to guide the operation of border borders, including riding lanes, traffic rules, and allowed areas of operation. We have to develop first our roads where we have special lanes for bicycles, we need lanes for pedestrians who can walk. Then motorized vehicles, including Boda Boda, Tuk Tuk, motor vehicles have to be on the road. For all it could be glorified for, including employment opportunities and a convenient mode of transport, the Boda Boda business is one that needs to receive closer attention by legislators from ensuring that only skilled operators are licensed to the installation of rules of operation. However, regulating this industry will not come easy. They are considered to wield massive power at the grassroots levels, power capable of changing political fortunes of many would-be politicians. They are used by most politicians in campaigns, including those holding positions at the county level. With the county and national governments unable to contain this group of entrepreneurs, many wonder for how long this vicious cycle will continue. Sharon Momani, KTN. Tonight we keep our focus on the roads around the country and want to move now to the speed cameras which look to have been overshadowed by the alcohol blow in the road safety campaign. It is however slowly stamping its authority in fighting road carnage. KTN's Angel Katusia reports. Forget the alcohol blow, a device that has become a nightmare for Kenyan motorists. Now there is this the speed camera. Imagine being waved down on a busy highway and accused of speeding. But just as you frantically deny the allegations, the evidence is displayed right before your face in the form of still and video images of your car, prominently displaying the prohibited speed at which you are driving. It's minutes to 11 a.m. Plain clothes police officers take position on a random spot. Today, the spot is just about 200 meters to Mulolongo, a built up area with a speed cap of 50 kilometers per hour. Just two minutes into the operation, four vehicles are flagged down. Ten minutes later, more and more vehicles are nabbed. But just how does this gadget work? The handheld cameras record clear images and pick speed from as far as three kilometers. The operator, usually a plain clothed officer positioned away from the main team, will capture an oncoming vehicle. If the vehicle is speeding, he then conveys the details of the vehicle using a radio call to the arresting officer stationed at a roadblock further ahead. All those arrested during this crackdown had to part with 10,000 shillings cash bail. They will be charged in court Monday. Though most motorists argued there are no clear traffic signs on the road, Peter Isanda, a chief inspector of police in charge of road safety, dismissed these as mere excuses. Most of the drivers, they don't want to comply with the law. Sometimes you may stop somebody 
and he decides to drive off. The inspector says most motorists are ignorant of road signage, probably because of what he termed as diminishing standards of local driving schools and backdoor acquisition of driving licenses. In 2013, when the cameras were acquired, 7,713 motorists were arrested. 52 million shillings was collected in fines. This month alone, so far 37 motorists in Nairobi and 24 in Mombasa have been charged with speeding. Currently, each region in the country, with the exception of Northeastern, has at least one camera. According to the Traffic Act, the driving license of a person will be suspended for a period of not less than three years if the violation of the speed limit is by up to 20 kilometers per hour and the violation is repeated three or more different times. Angel Katusia, KTN. Indeed, so do be careful out on the roads. Let's move away from matters of road safety and into politics. And let's go to Eldoret now, where a section of Jubilee leaders have criticized the Quad Alliance following its recent claims that the Jubilee government clinched power through the help of the military. Deputy President William Ruto said Quad sentiments will not deter the government from fulfilling its campaign pledges. Eldoret was the venue where a section of legislators allied to Jubilee hit out at court's recent allegations that Jubilee leaders used the military in the 2013 general election to forcefully ascend to power. The leaders accused court of misinforming Kenyans, saying the party was in government then and in control of the military. <laughs> Tayasa <laughs> Arudi state house. Kundi alisaliwa. Na tukazema raila arudi bondo. Sasa ni maona safari mefika kisumu. Bado kilomita kumi na tano kufika bondo. Kwa jamaa wakitanda huli ni mwenyezi mungu alikataye kukalia kwa kiti. Sio sisi. Awaje kuongea. Kufanya wa Kenya. Kupatia wa Kenya siyasa chafu. The leaders were speaking at the St. Barnabas Catholic Church, Kimumu, in Eldoret, during a special annual offering. They termed the former Prime Minister Raila Odinga's claims made at a rally in Kisumu Saturday as propaganda, blaming the opposition for using a section of Rift Valley leaders in promoting their agenda. Ananza kuunda timi yake ati yapa Rift Valley, ambao watachukua nafasi ya naibu wa rais. Na mambo haya sisi kama viongozi tunajua. So tunataka kumwambia Raila Odinga na code team kwa ujumla. Sisi katika sehemu ya bonde la Ufa hatuna vacuum ya leadership. Nimeona siku hizo wamegroom. Siku hizo nasikia Isaac Ruto walenda waka negotiate na yeye. Nasikia Isaac Ruto ni mjomba wake. Ndio hii tena umekuja umenegotiate na Ketera hapa ni mjomba wake. Achukua wajomba wake wawili waende naye huko Nyanza wadanganya watu lakini taifa la Kenya isimame. Mimi nataka viongozi hasa wa code wakue kama wakimbiaji. Wanaenda kwa truck, wanakimbia, ikifika mwisho mwenye ameshinda anaendelea mbele, ule mwingine anasalamia mwingine na anakaa kando. Angoje mwaka tano. The deputy president called on Kenyans to support governor's plans of raising revenue to avoid dependency on aid, adding that the government had set aside 10 billion shillings, funds to aid the elderly and people with disabilities. Wale wenye wako upinzani, wapinge kwa kutumia ukweli, wapinge, wasipinge kwa kusema uongo, kwa sababu Kenya iko na shortage ya watu wajinga. Kenya hii, watu wote wanajua what is going on. The deputy president leaves for the Hague Sunday evening for the crimes against humanity case against him at the ICC. Masi Kandia KTN, Eldoret, 
was in Gishu County. And indeed, we'll also be getting some reactions from our panel tonight on Checkpoint regarding uh, that story you have just watched. Let's move away from that now into the security lapse at the JKI last Thursday night. That is the latest in a spate of recent incidents where security personnel failed to detect impending danger, also causing concern now, is how those tasked with managing the country's security communicate information on security-related threats. Ben Kitili digs out a trend that shows dangerous fault lines in security reporting lines. From the preliminary investigations, we can rule out a grenade or a bomb attack. Most probably, it's an electric fault. This was the initial response by then police chief Matthew Itere. Following the terrorist attack on Arsenal House along Moy Avenue in Nairobi, that left 33 people injured, 16 of them critically. However, after the Kenya Power Company vehemently denied the reports, the police later confirmed that the blast had indeed been caused by a bomb. But it appears that the changes at the helm of the country's security operators did not include its system of public communication, and its effect was not long in coming. It was during the Westgate siege in September last year, and in the wake of the largest terrorist attack in Kenya since the bombing of the U.S. Embassy in Nairobi in August 1998, Kenyans struggled to access an information in what was in effect a blurry operation. When Interior Secretary Joseph Olelenko addressed a press briefing, his remarks baffled the nation. The smoke you are seeing from the building is as a result of the terrorists putting, uh, setting some mattress on fire to distract our action. And barely a week ago, Bungoma Senator Moses Wetangula's scar was allegedly shot at in Nairobi. The police immediately responded, saying that the senator's car had in fact been hit by an erratic advertisement billboard. And the latest police spin that is still causing ripples among Kenyans, the explosion of the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Inspector General of Police David Kimayo explained to skeptic Kenyans that the said explosion was indeed caused by an electric bulb that fell into a dustbin. So was that a poorly worked out spin by the police or purely taking Kenyans for a ride? I think the government is hiding some things. Former counter-terrorism field agent Mbijue Mwenda faults the police service for what he calls a police coup that could cost Kenya on the security front. I wish the IG was not the one who made that statement. I wish it came from the police spokeswoman. And then the IG would come later and recant that statement. It's not time to take us for granted and tell us and tell us lies. It's time to say the truth. The clear lack of coordination across the police hierarchy, Mbijiwa says, is something that can be avoided. He had no more guts to say, yes, I still stand on that. He said, we're investigating. That's what he should have said at the beginning. It later turned out that a bomb had been smuggled inside the region's premier airport and an inevitable negative effect on JKIA. What the terrorists achieved was causing a downgrading of our, air, of our airport, which has a direct effect on our economy. And if you remember what Al-Shabaab has vowed to do is to, to, to cripple our economy. In the recent past, Kenya has been a soft target for terrorists. And questions over the leadership in the police service may not be helping the fight on terror. Ben Ketili, KTN. Uganda has now taken its cue from Kenya and banned the controversial Hollywood movie The Wolf of Wall Street. But days after the Kenya Film Classification Board banned the film, more Kenyans have expressed interest in watching it. KTN's Asham Willu reports. Hey, listen, I, I quit. Yeah, I'm going into stocks. My name is Jordan Belfort. The, the Martin Scorsese film is up for five Academy Award nominations. It's been applauded by the world's film critics who've described it as funny, self-referential, and irreverent to a fault. Correct? No. Audiences in Kenya were, however, not as keen on the film up until it was banned last week Thursday. The decision by the Kenya Film Classification Board to bar the distribution of this movie has sent Kenyans on a wild goose chase to find a copy of The Wolf of Wall Street. 
So we set out to DVD vendors in the city to find out if they're implementing the ban. I've come to look for that movie that's been banned, The Wolf of Wall Street. You have it? Nikonaya. Nezapata. I have Nezapata. So how much do you sell it for? 50 bomb. Can I get one? Okay, so this movie has been banned. How come you're still selling it? No, nah, because it's gonna you know, not sell your same movie. Lolly ban, you gonna high demand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Since it was banned, mm. like how many people will come ask for it in a day? You know, hey, I can say like 25 people. Because you want to call it Nini, 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 But do you agree with the decision to ban this movie? Mm. Sioni, because even movie mobs zikona yo bad language zikona sex so sioni adza ya kubanyo with most movie vendors taking advantage of the booming interest in the banned movie kenyans are still torn on whether the movie ought to have been banned in the first place if a movie is too explicit i'm sorry it should be it should be just banned from being watched yeah because hey we will we'll spoil a lot of people according to me i've seen more explicit movies so if the, is that what they call explicit no as in i don't think so that's that much yeah. so i think they should leave the movie yeah the movie is not even bad spartacus is better than that <laughs> The last time the banning of a controversial movie in Kenya caused an uproar was back in 2007 when the board outlawed the Kenyan film Auto the Bloodbath by G2 Films. Can't believe he's cheating on me. Look. Oh, the movie's director Alex Constantaras made a comeback last year with his film House of Lungula. Although the trailer and the title of the film were suggestive, the film classification board found the film itself tasteful enough to be screened. Last year, Two Hollywood blockbusters were banned in Kenya. Movie 43 was termed too explicit, while the Seth Rogen comedy This Is The End was found unsuitable by the classification board. Have you seen Michael Sarah tonight? What's up, Rihanna? I can't believe people still invite him places. The Wolf of Wall Street has been banned in more than seven countries worldwide, with Uganda being the latest on that list. <laughs> Asham Wilu, KTN, Nairobi. And we want to talk about this a little bit more. So we have Emma Irungo, who's a film officer with the Kenya Film Classification Board, to just tell us more about this. As you've seen in that story, um, immediately after the ban, it is still available in shops. People are still downloading it on the internet. Would you then say that uh, your order to restrict this film has been effective? Uh, I would say that um, what is happening is what I would call the forbidden fruit effect. That uh, when, uh, when something is, uh, when people are prohibited from from consuming or seeing something. That is when there they, they is a lot of curiosity. And I think people are reacting to this cu curiosity. Uh, we are just hoping that uh, people could take, uh, could take, uh, could trust us uh, okay. uh, how we've classified it and they, they don't watch because it's not good for them. But uh, ask, uh, answering your question of whether we, 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 we are really enforcing this, uh, I would want to tell you that uh, we just uh, banned this movie last week and uh, our officers are already on the ground mm -hmm. uh, doing the spot checks and then uh, you'll see more of rates. Okay. All right, knowing yeah. that there's that theory of the forbidden fruit, was this then the best approach? Could there have been a different one? Um, I would say that this was the best approach because uh, the law, uh, uh, that is what the law says, that uh, once we ban a movie, that then we should make it public. And uh, I... I believe that we did the right thing because uh, uh, just as I've seen from your clip, many people are agreeing with us that this movie is, is too explicit. Right. And so our putting, uh, our putting the information out there, we wanted to, the public to know because we know that people are accessing these movies through the internet. That's we just thing, wanted yes. to warn them, even if they are able to access this movie on, on internet, that they should not watch it because you, it's not good for them. Okay. Will you be able to catch the, the people that download it on their PCs, on their iPads, and you know, on their laptops at home? Because this is something they can do. Uh, if you're going to send your officers out to the DVD shops, that's fine. But what about if I'm watching it in my home? Will you have spot checks door to door? Will you know? Is that something that you're capable of doing? The, the reason, uh, uh, the more reason as to why we, we had to make this information public because we know we cannot be everywhere. 
actually we cannot be everywhere as much as we want to uh, we've put our, uh, uh, our enforcement officers down there and we've uh, engaged the police also to help us to do the raids and the spot checks we know that we cannot be everywhere and that is why we had to put the information so that even those people who are watching it uh, in their private uh, in their uh, in the private capacity they can also know that this what they are about okay. to watch is not right okay so they'll know but they'll still watch it anyway uh, um, one of the things that we're supposed to do in one of our functions is that we need to, to give consumer advice. And we've done a lot uh, okay. about this film. If you've watched other stations, we've, we've gone on air to tell the people why we, we, we had to restrict this film, what is the content, and what are the okay. dangers and right. the effects. Okay. Uh, this is the, the, the Wolf of Wall Street, yes. together with three others, and there's even a local one as well yeah. uh, that's in the list that's been banned. Yeah. But what of pornography DVDs that, you know, that are on sale? Um, how do you ban that? That, how do you control and regulate that distribution because a lot of people on social media have been saying well it's all well and good to ban the wolf of Wall Street as many other countries have done but a lot of Kenyans know that it is very easy to get access to DVDs uh, that are showing pornography forget this that is explicit but we have pornography of people actually going all the way out and and doing things how do you then stop that for example because that is the question many people are asking porn DVDs are widely available well I want to agree with you yeah that is a challenge it's a, a big challenge to us uh, there is the, the, the much that we can do by the end of the day so uh, we we try to do the much that we can uh, we've tried to confiscate and uh, I'm sure you've uh, even KTN has covered us doing the raids and uh, not only the raids we also uh, are synthesizing the public about the the effects and influences of the content that they watch so uh, pornography is also prohibited in this country. That's what people should know. It's prohibited. And uh, we know that people are engaged in that. But uh, as I've said, we can do the just the much that we can. And that is what we are trying to do. Because by the end of the day, we've got a mandate to protect the public from, from consuming harmful content. Okay. Many would yes. say, though, that would be a personal decision uh, that you cannot enforce on adults. I know what the law says, yes. uh, you know, and that empowers you to be able to actually restrict these films. Uh, but many would say this is a personal decision, especially for adults. If you're doing it for children, that's one thing. Uh, but what do you say to adults who want to go ahead and watch this? Because you say, we're telling people not to watch it because it's not good for them. But many people would say, well, I'm an adult and I can decide what's good for me and what isn't. What do you say to that? Yes, um, uh, yes, adults, uh, they, they have choices, but by the end of the day, uh, even adults can make the wrong decision. So that is why we've and got... And so you're there to help them make the right decision? Yes, even them, they can make the wrong decision, because maybe by the end of the day, when they are watching, you even don't know who they are watching with. They could be watching the children. As a government, government should also protect even that child, yeah, and even that adult. Uh, it doesn't ma mean that every decision that we make is right. We can always be corrected, even when we are adults. Okay. And that is why we've got to restrict and tell them this is wrong. Actually, we have films that we classify as adults, that is 18. Mm. But when we restrict, it means that is extreme. In, 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 uh, in the elements that we look for, it means that film is extreme. Is, is it crime? It's extreme. Okay. Is it sex? It's okay. extreme. If it, is it uh, alcohol and, uh, and drugs? It's, mm -hmm. is, uh, it's extreme. Actually, uh, uh, giving the example of this movie that we've just... Uh, have you have, watched it, though, Emma? I have. You I have. have, yeah. And there's a lot of... Uh, actually, it, uh, it has uh, uh, pornography and mostly perverted, what I would call pervert, perverted sex, because there's threesome, okay. there's homosexuality. That is All prohibited right. in this country, even for an adult. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. So to the DVD shops, you will be going out in the course of this? We'll week? be going us out. They'll be seeing us. They, okay. they, 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 they saw us uh, last Saturday, last mm -hmm. Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they expect to see more of us and, uh, and also the policemen. Okay. All yes. right. Thank you so much for joining us on our bulletin tonight to shed more light on this. So if you are in possession of that, beware. The Kenya Film Classification Board is coming out in the course of this week for you. We want to take a short break right now on KTN Weekend Prime. But when we return, Checkpoint is on and I can already see many of your comments. We'll be talking about how to get fair and equitable positions in government appointments. Is it really possible to achieve the face of Kenya in all government appointments that are made? We'll be discussing all of that next. Do stand by on Twitter. The hashtag is Checkpoint. See you soon. Your weekly political talk show Checkpoint and the discussion tonight is on the controversial government appointments. You are watching KTN Weekend Prime.
Welcome back to Checkpoint. Today we are talking about appointments and taking a, a different look at it. We're not looking so much at the controversies of Mudara and the rest, but uh, if you read the standard yesterday, it was talking about the distribution of the seats to represent the face of Kenya. 57.5% of the appointments that have been made by the Uhuruta administration in the last nine months come from the Mount Kenya and Rift Valley regions. The rest share the spoils after that. Um, if you can call them spoils depending on which way you look at it is it possible for us to do this what is the best way for us to achieve this that is what we're discussing now hashtag on twitter is checkpoint you can tweet me at Yvonne Aquara. you can also send us a text the number is 22155 today our panel as usual however we do not have uh, John Mbadi with us he had some urgent matters to attend to in his constituency he sends his apologies but will be with us next week but we have Johnson Sakaja who's the chair of the TNA and Professor Kisiangani our resident political analyst with us so um, let's start with you, uh, Sakaja. Obviously, 57.5 from two regions. I know we keep hearing that yes. there is more to come, but many fear that with what we've seen so far, that you know, uh, this may be a little difficult to achieve. Um, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I want to say from the outset that the impression created by the Standard newspaper yesterday is totally false and misleading. And uh, why I say this is for the following reason. Number one, um, when you look at the appointments, there are three levels. You have appointments of uh, cabinet secretaries that have been done. Mm -hmm. You have appointments of PSs that have been done and completed, 26 PSs, principal secretaries. Mm -hmm. Then you have 30% of the parasitical appointments. So even when you do such an analysis, it is not proper to try to, you know, get an inference from the 30% of parasitical appointments that have been done. Okay, but uh, you, you, Sakaja, yeah. out of all those that we're talking about, particularly these latest ones, 25 each from me, Rift Valley, from Mount Kenya, and then six from Northeastern, six from Western. The reason I'm saying this is that the appointments of parasitical uh, chairs has not been complete. You cannot get a complete picture. But if you want to establish a trend, then why don't you look at the appointment of cabinet secretaries? When it was done, I think uh, many Kenyans were, were very happy. There was no hear and cry about it. There was regional balance. We had people from all parts of this country. We had uh, lawyers in, uh, uh, we have a lawyer in cabinet. We have uh, a lawyer in cabinet, Rachel Omamo is in cabinet. We have a whole spectrum um, of all communities. From the president's own community, we have only three cabinet secretaries, yeah, out of the 18. In the past, you'd have seen very different figures, and, and, and we must give the due where, you know, credit where it is. In the principal secretaries' uh, appointments, we have seen for the first time a lot of the minority communities being looked at, yeah? We have actually three pokots in a uh, peer's position. Never before have you heard that. We have a Turkana. We have Samburus, we have two Somalis. Actually, you only have two Kalenjin PSs in this country, meaning there are more lawyers who are PSs than Kalenjins. So we, when you decide to paint a picture that is obviously skewed by looking at an, a, a level of appointments that is not complete, I think we're misleading Kenyans. What? If you look, yeah. I, I think uh, my friend Sak Sakaija is uh, making a joke out of a very serious matter. Yeah. The, this country, People should not be given appointments because of uh, mere t tokenism that we have a lawyer, we have a, a law in, in, in government, and therefore they have got something. There is no explanation why the president should have three people from his region, or the deputy president should have three people from his region and another region has one. There, there must be an explanation which justifies that. The second thing that I would like you to, to, to take note of is this. Even when you look at the statistics, even in cases where as the reports from the standard came in, even where you have principal secretaries, if, for example, as they put it, that principal secretaries Ruto got five, and uh, and maybe I mean I mean Ruto had 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 eight, and probably the president had had influence over over thirteen. A half of those that seem to be leaning towards the, the deputy president are from the Rift Valley, and a half of those who are seen to be in the president's uh, camp came from the Mount Kenya region. You can do those statistics and no. you say, even when you have even told a lie on this show, when you said that there are only two permanent secretaries from the Kalenjin world, that, yes. is, not, that is not correct. Mm -hmm. the, the, I, mean, if, I mean, when you talk about Musonik, I can give you a full list mm -hmm. here. If you look at, uh, let, let's just look at Spigini. Musonik, 
Mm -hmm. uh, James Leotum, water. Leotum is a pocket. Is yeah, but that, if you, you should go oh, back no. to your history. Okay. All right. Colleges no, are. are no, no, no. Let, 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 just, uh -huh. let me just finish. Uh -huh. Because you, you, you have Kipsang mm -hmm. in health, you have Fred Segor. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Kipsang in education, then Fred Segor in health. Mm -hmm. are, we, are, we are not saying that these gentlemen don't qualify. They qualify to do the job. But oh. because the jobs are few, you have no explanation why some region in Kenya okay. should have more people right. from, from, from in cabinet um, or as chairman. And you can, you can let, let me just finish this point because uh -huh. it's important uh -huh. uh, so that Mr. Sagaja responds to it. You look at the chairman. Even when you look at the chairman, the analysis that we have seen, in fact, there are names, if people can read that, mm -hmm. that if you look at the chairman of different presidents, if you took a look at 22, 22 chairmen, mm -hmm. We who are leaning towards the president mm -hmm. again have come from Mount Kenya, and then of course those who wow. are leaning leaning towards the deputy president they come from the, from the, 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 the Rift Valley. Valley. Okay. This is not acceptable, two and it's against the constitution. Sakaja? No, two things. I, I really must counter that mm -hmm. misinformation, mm -hmm. and I know it is being propagated deliberately to paint a negative picture um, on not only on government but on certain communities. Mm -hmm. When you look at uh, many communities that have been previously marginalized, if you look at the Pokot, if you look at Turkana. On the basis of the marginalization, we look at them as Turkanas, we look at them at Pokots, mm -hmm. as Pokots, we look at them as Samburus. Mm -hmm. But when these people get appointments, I don't know why, uh, whether the notion is that they should never be appointed, no. then you say that they are Kalenjins. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it okay. really, it really okay. is not fair. No, that's secondly, uh -huh. secondly, the misleading thing is mm -hmm. this. How has the professor, the good professor from Kenyatta University, inferred that so and so is leaning mm. towards the southern side mm. of the coalition. Okay. How? No. Right. Unless, unless it is just the ethnic chauvinism no. that we're used to. Okay. No, no. So if, 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 if you see a name, if you see a name like Mosonic, you say okay, automatically no. that is a person leaning no, to the no. president. So These are not political some, appointments. Some of these people we know them, and we even know how the the, the interviews were conducted. How are they conducted? Uh, I, mean, we, I mean, we you, oh, you, tell you, us. There are people who who applied for these jobs, even for principal secretaries, and they were not shortlisted, and uh, people with lesser qualifications who were shortlisted. This, this is not. I don't think. I can name individuals, but but, oh, but, I, but yeah. I can tell you. No, 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 I can true. tell you. I come from the academy, and I can tell you, my brother. Don't be emotional about this thing. There are very many people who qualified to to even sit for interviews, but they were not called because if they were called, they were going to to increase the competition okay. so that the relevant boys and girls let's, could let's, be chosen. Let's, let's talk about it this way, though. Is it indeed possible to have the face of Kenya? Yes. Uh, Equitably represented it is, in, it is, it is, in, in appointments. It is Let me possible. Say this. Let's um, start with you, Sakaji. It's, it's possible. If, uh -huh. if, 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 you, if you have the attitude that a uh, professor has, it will be impossible. Because there are many communities in this country that have never had a shot, a fair shot, mm -hmm. at some of these appointments. We need to change how we think about them, especially the minority communities. When the list of principal secretaries was uh, released, Everyone was happy. We saw for the first time people with disabilities. We saw people from all over the country, from uh, ethnic Arabs to Luyas to, you know, uh, Somalis. Mm -hmm. Everybody was, uh, was uh, involved in that. Mm -hmm. But really, what we must ask ourselves as Kenyans, because the Constitution aspires towards having mm. the representation mm -hmm. of all parts mm -hmm. of this country. Article 10 talks yeah? about that. Article yes. 10 talks about it, yes. Article 130. Right. Um, beyond that aspiration, how do we implement it? If you have 18 positions, do we want to say that from 18 positions, they only give you one per community? It's something that can be done. Okay, do we but want to even say then, even as we say that, yes. that it's something that can be done, yes. but what happens if you don't find somebody who's qualified in community X or you see, Y? You, you, you see the point, the, the, the point that you see, and that, is, that, that is the point. Oh. We, 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 we cannot put um, ethnicity uh, be, uh, above meritocracy. Okay. Because if, for example, and, and for a long time I know Kikuyus have been bashed on this. If you see a Kikuyu appointed, you say it is wrong. Do we want to start putting advertisements and say a Kikuyu need not apply? This is not or a, a Kalenjin need, need not is, apply? This is because not a, because this what, what ends up, and kindly allow me to finish that point, you end up having reverse discrimination. Kenyans never chose where they were born. If somebody qualifies for a job, let us find a way that we can look at a person beyond the lens of their community, below, uh, beyond the lens of their tribe, and look at the merit of that, that, that person has. That, Maybe even we should black out people's names from CVs. Yes. That, so that you can appoint somebody the, based on merit. The, 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 let, me, let me say, this is not a Kikuyu problem. This is not even a Kalenjin problem. The ethnicization of the state is the African problem. And it is the one that is causing problems across the African continent, where people take power 
in the name of ethnicity and start rewinding their own ethnicities. If the jobs are few, what you need to do is to, to get a, a national formula. We can sit together as, and as what, a nation. What, and what, we, we, and, and, and what I was seeing from the president from the first uh, speech mm -hmm. he gave, mm -hmm. he was interested in uniting the nation. So I knew that probably he will con consult he, the, the, the voters to say, mm -hmm. how can we work out a good formula for distribution? On one hand, my brother is saying that you, 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 you can still appoint uh, people the, the, uh, from one community and a balance because small communities require some, uh, some attention. No. But on the other hand, and he, ha he has already considered the fact that people from particular communities, at least two communities, have the majority. Okay. No. So what explanation do you give to that? By, by giving right. more people you know, on one hand and denying others, are you saying that that is fair? Let me say this. And, 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 and anybody who has access to a newspaper or to the internet can be able to go through the names. Mm -hmm. When you look at the, com uh, at the appointments that have been completed, that is the cabinet secretaries mm -hmm. and, the and the principal secretaries, secretaries. it is very well balanced. Okay. In fact, a lot of credit needs to be given to the president and the deputy because for the first time in the history of this country, we have seen a good balance. Okay. What let is your idea no, of balance ask, in the last... Uh, what is, let me ask... What is his idea question. of balance? Even as two we talk about... Or, two, or three to one. And, and is that, that is balance? The, I think that is there the big is, formula that we are talking yes. about, the elusive formula that we perhaps you cannot can get. Three, no, is one it, and I'd just one like us to be... No, gentlemen, I'd like us to be a little realistic about this. Is it possible to have... every? We have 42 tribes. Should we then have... 42 cabinet uh, you know, secretaries. The, the question you what have, to have that, what, what would be that what winning formula that makes you. everybody from every region in the country happy? Yvonne, we need to seriously address our value system as a, as a country. Because that is the heart of it. Leadership is formed out of character. You cannot expect somebody to become a leader suddenly and change the character that he has been all his life. Many Kenyans, if you, if, if you look, and, I, and I'm not saying this as, as you know, uh, to, to qualify any ethnic bias, mm -hmm. because I have said categorically there's no ethnic bias, but many Kenyans, even prof, I'm sure, in your house, it is likely that the person who's helping you domestically is from your community or from your village. It is likely that your driver is, is, is your tribesman. So then what and, are you saying? And that happens. But uh -huh. we, we need to start changing our thinking, because it does not mean that only people from your village or any, only people from your community are qualified for that. First, we change that. But secondly, we need some serious and deliberate efforts by policymakers to finish this. In Singapore, there was a big problem mm -hmm. um, of ethnicity, negative ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Lee Kuan Yew did an, uh, you know, something that was unprecedented. He actually put it in the law that if you're staying in an apartment block, there must be a certain mix of different communities so they can start learning each other's cultures. I think we need to open up, you know, because for a long time we have been lied to by politicians, by leaders, and maybe even by professors, that the reason why this community does not have, uh, or you don't have, you don't have uh, certain levels of development is mm -hmm. because of another community. Okay. Yeah. The reason why you guys are like not advancing is because we, of another we, community. We would never argue like we need, that. We, we need to change, we we need to change we, our we, values. We, we, we would never argue like that. I would agree with you on the question of values. But what we are saying is that we are addressing a serious national problem. The problem is that some people view this kind of arrangement where you have four to one, and then you say four to one means the balance, oh. to mean that the state is seemingly is. tilting towards a particular section oh, of the, the society. It is not true. And secondly, the bigger danger when Sakaja doesn't even lie with this appointment. There are people who are heading national institutions in this country and who are going to replicate what you are calling balance. And you would see that some people are being denied certain positions because of this thing called balance and they pick it from the top leadership so what we need from our president is as, as an as a change of things the way they have, they have been done in the past let so, him let him okay, do something prof, new prof question with what has happened so far and we know the president and deputy president have said on many occasions that this is not the end uh we are yet to see ambassadors and you know consulates and, and that sort of uh, but you can always expect to uh, get what, uh, the, what is right so for the, you from what we're seeing so far you're not optimistic uh, I'm not very optimistic because it seems, you see, every, every time an appointment is made, it looks so obvious. Okay, it, but it, it can, doesn't can you say, it, it, um, it is not right. It's not factual. Yeah. Let me tell you. Okay. Yeah. There are more. No, we are PSs. There, there are three PSs. No, we are not talking about. No, 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 no. Can, no, no, can we, no, we talk about regions? Let me. We are not talking about Luyas. And, 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 and avoid let me speaking me, about let me particular tell you. communities. Let me tell you. 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 Let me tell you that you're having a discussion that is not tribal because when you say that from the present stronghold or from most stronghold of these communities but when i go to the details you're saying no let's all go tribal. no 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 okay uh, no let me you, call you, it western let me yes. call it western yes. call i it think western. that would be much better yeah, yeah. Naturally, naturally i am i am i am very uncomfortable with discussion uh, you know mm -hmm. with with such a discussion that takes us to that level but just to be mystify 
yeah. this myth and this you know idea that is being propagated by people for obvious reasons yesterday we saw the, the vice president saying that 90 percent of the appointments are from two communities it is totally untrue okay if you look at the list uh -huh. let me tell you that that the 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 almost four the three appointments from western kenya four appointments okay. from central province you have, you, you have a similar number but when you look at the appointments from central province there's a problem i think all right, I, I okay. think all right. To, I, i'd like us to move i'd like us to move um, no, 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 i'd like no. us to move to another one and, and we'll get to um some statements that were made because i'd really like your reactions on that tonight yes. gentlemen but also there's the idea of you know nepotism and you know clearly putting in uh, siblings and relatives and that sort of thing yes. and before we even get to what's happening or what would be happening in jubilee let me also remind you that even in the grand coalition uh, no, even from worse. the side of odm it, it, yes it but is, yes i just worse. i want to balance the discussion because not just this once in it, jubilee but even when odm mm -hmm. was in power in the grand coalition let, 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 we did see um you Yvonne, know, I, I, can, I can tell you Yvonne, this. you can't compare, I, can, I, I, can, I, can, I can tell you this Yvonne, that is exactly my problem. And even in my own uh, classes when I talk to students, I, I, I feel so bad about it. And I've said this is a leadership and an African problem. During the Grand Coalition, ministers were given power to, to hire fellows. And most of the ministers under Kibaki hired people from their own villages. There was a lot of ne nepotism. The statistics... What about the ministers? No, wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm finishing. Okay. Uh, and I can tell you this, that at one time, everybody who was working in the office of the, 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 the prime minister, you would check the list as you enter mm -hmm. the offices. Mm -hmm. You see people from one place and they could even transact and, business and in one community okay. and then you, so you, what, you, you what put then that aside and then go to state house where president kibaki was serving you see the same thing replicated okay the the, the national cohesion and integration commission kept pointing out this matter there was seen of it talking about this matter mm -hmm. nothing was done mm -hmm. so what we're saying is that we don't want this thing to replicate itself under the president K K K okay. Kinyata, I'll, under, I'll under, under David right. president ruto we would like okay. them to change this mindset ask the nation to give them a formula. It is not Kisiangani's formula. It is a national formula. Let us agree that how do we share these posts? The national government belongs to all of us. County okay. governments are all for right. individual Sakata? people. Let me tell you. That's um, what Mr. From, Sakaja should address. From the outset yes. um, of the formation of this government, mm -hmm. we have been very clear, or rather the government has been very clear because I'm not a minister in government in that respect. Mm -hmm. You are a member but of as parliament. A chair, as a chair of TNA, I want to assure you mm -hmm. that each part of this country will get the fairest share that you can get. If you look at the complete appointments, and I want to say categorically, mm -hmm. if you look at it in a, with an honest lens, if you look at it honestly, without any bias, it is much, much better than any we have seen before. Honestly. There are certain parts of this country that for the first time okay. have PSS. We have that balance. Right, okay. But beyond that, uh -huh. we need to do something to infuse that character within Kenyans. And secondly, as legislators, yeah. we can actually put some measures. Because, uh -huh. for example, if you look at, um, and, and maybe it's, it's somewhere we want to go to, if you look at uh, the tenders that we're doing for young people, mm -hmm. yeah, you're seeing parasatels uh, and, 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 and ministries mm -hmm. uh, announcing that this tender is for youth. For you to create that balance, probably there are certain positions that when you advertise for, you should say, this, this position is, from is for this from region. This region. Is for, you know, okay. For example, okay, that, you, that, 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 that is a suggestion. That. I just want to say to, 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 to add very quickly, quickly, because add quickly I, I to his to suggestion. Else. Really, Yvonne, they are talking about other appointments remaining. There are certain portfolios who, that have certain prestige with, that go with them. And, and the certain services that go with them, and you cannot you cannot just say all these uh, portfolios that are being given are the same. There are certain portfolios that will condemn you to oblivion, and and you have seen even on television today. Oh, but that's the one, one, one person was telling you that that give the prime minister uh, Kalonzo some work. This kind of that arrogance is, that is, is actually, very, okay, very okay. bad. Even, even as, as we finish this thing, yes. yes, that is actually the problem. The culture that you know, once you job, get into public office, that's right. Once you get into public office, you? your work is to benefit your community. No, and the thinking that if I do not have my person at carry, if our person is not in treasury, not we will not get services. Right. It's something we need okay. to do. Okay, before we conclude, and very quickly, if we can, in a minute, um, we've discussed that, and possibly a formula that maybe we can be formula. created uh, within the national assembly and within other fora. Yes, I guess Parliament even can do that. Um, but, but, but so, so the far suggestion can even come from the people. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Yes. Um, but I'd just like your comments, uh, both of you, uh, on the statements that were made by the former prime minister at the rally that we saw uh, taking place in Kisumu yesterday about you know the military being used uh, to help 
Jubilee ascend to power. Uh, Justice William Mutunga made a decision he did not uh, necessarily agree with and such like statements. Sakaj, I'd like your reaction to that. Let me say this uh, before Prof weighs in. The reason this country for a long time has not gone to total meltdown. I know we had problems in 2007. The reason why we have not been able to, whereas our, our neighbors and many other countries have done that, is because of institutions. I think it must be ingrained, especially in leaders, that we must respect institutions. Because even when the individuals move from the institutions, the institutions stay. There's a book that I'd recommend you for, for you to read, Why Nations Fail. And it shows the difference between countries that develop and are prosperous and countries that are in problems, it's because of institutions. The remarks made by the former prime minister were very, very irresponsible and unfortunate. Because you cannot embitter an institution like the military. And if you had any fact with, you know, with what you're saying, I don't know why it was never raised at the Supreme Court of Kenya, they had a case there. It has never been raised before, nine months later. That's why I'm saying there is an obvious and deliberate attempt to divide Kenyans along those lines. The military is made up of many Kenyans, young people, who are neither code nor jubilee, but they're our last line of defense. He's saying it at a time when our military is actually in Somalia for the defense of Kenyans. I think it was, it was irresponsible, and actually we'll be asking for him to apologize to the military of this country. We were in Bomas. I was in Bomas for all those seven days. We were at the point when we were removed, apart from the agents, and I know Apollo Orengo, Orengo's younger brother, was there full time. Our agent who was supposed to be the telling center was there full time. All of us were removed. I was ejected as well because there were many people now milling around the area that were preventing work from going on, which is part of the reason why it went on for more than a week. But for you to issue such a statement to a charged crowd, what are you doing to this country? Are you trying to divide this country or are you trying to unite this country? Okay. Let us respect our institutions. On, on that note, I agree with uh, my friend Sakaja. Mm -hmm. That was a reckless statement. We do not want to politicize the military. We, we are a civilian society and we would like to contest elections and, and announce winners when they, are, they, they make it. I have issues with the way the ruling was made in March because I thought serious questions of law were not addressed and even serious questions of evidence. But we have succumbed to the institutions of the judiciary. A civilized government must have these institutions working. So when they make a ruling, it doesn't favor. If it doesn't favor mm -hmm. you, you do not have to, to cry more. What I think needs to be done is that you should understand that the prime minister is coming from a background of frustration, political frustration. And probably if he thinks about that statement, twice he will think that that statement is not good for an elder because the military once you start politicizing it it can destroy our country and that is why africa has had problems because of this military let us give it its respect but more important i think it is important and i thought that my friend sakaja would give this advice the, uh, it is easy for us to blame others when we fail in life that is the, the most common thing. You will always mm -hmm. say, even you tumble from this office, <laughs> and then you say, other people, Siagani has caused it. But we never become objective enough to look at the mistakes that we have made ourselves. So the Jubilee co co the, the Code Coalition needs to look back and just look at their faces and their past deeds and say, did we do well in organizing ourselves okay. to win the elections? All if right. they do that, they are likely to win the election in the future. But if they start blaming people mm -hmm. and completely overlook the mistakes, the tactical that mistakes made. that they made but during the... But say it wasn't even a voter turnout it, issue. Yes, yes. Uh, with, so with th the this is what I'm saying. Okay. So okay. if I mean, they hired me, okay. I would tell them, this is what you should be doing. In fact, they should not be doing okay. this military thing. It is, it's reckless. 30 seconds, Sakaja. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Mm. Let me say this. <laughs> Usually when your opponent is making mistakes, you should not interrupt them. But I want <laughs> this to is good for you <laughs> for once. Okay. You want to yeah. interrupt them? <laughs> I know that uh, code is holding elections soon. Yeah. Right. As chair of TNA, I wish them the best. I hope that they can get people who can create a vibrant opposition for this country. Because sometimes when you hear the statements coming from code, it just shows you that they have nothing to say. They have no real agenda for this country. They have no alternative. We want to see policy alternatives. When you say Nyumbakumi, tell us, mm -hmm. no, not Nyumbakumi. Mm -hmm. We're thinking of this other okay. different thing. I think they need to, you know, okay. get organized. And secondly, I want to ask Kenyans, please, let us not allow ourselves to be divided by such reckless statements mm -hmm. from wherever, whichever quarter, even if they come from leadership within Jubilee. Okay. Let us not allow right. that. We okay. have gone through too much as a country. All right. And on that note, we conclude. And like you talked about, ODM will be going through elections. It is something we will definitely be discussing right here.
here on this panel. That should be an interesting conversation. And yes, on Checkpoint, sometimes our panelists do agree on certain issues as they have on this last one. That's it for Checkpoint now. Thank you for your feedback. Keep it coming. I will continue to sample some of your texts and some of your tweets as we carry on with our conversation. We take a short break now. Thank you for staying with us on KTN Weekend Prime. Now, tonight, Africa is mourning one of her greatest journalists in the last decade. BBC's Ghanaian presenter Komla Dumour's sudden death at his London home has shocked the continent, with Ghana's president leading his country in paying tribute to the 41-year-old journalist. Ashamwilu reports. Have Danny Green, mm -hmm. who scored 24 three-pointers in this A series. leading light in African journalism, a talented presenter, a man of the people with an infectious sense of humor. Tributes continue to flow in as Africa mourns the death of the enthusiastic BBC presenter, Komla Dumour. Hey, Komla Dumour, from Peter, and the heat, the rest of the team. The sudden death of the 41-year-old Ghanaian was announced Saturday evening, shocking his fans from all over the world. Dumour is said to have suffered a cardiac arrest in his London home. The broadcast journalist was a presenter with BBC World News TV and is famous for his focus on Africa show that airs live from London. Following a successful decade-long career in Ghana's media, Dumour joined the BBC in 2007. He has contributed greatly in telling the African story with no bias or exaggeration. The role of journalists, especially on the continent, is to report accurately, to tell the truth, and to cover the stories that are not on the beaten path. I mean, there's so many issues out there uh, on the continent that need to be addressed, whether it's Ghana, Nigeria, Zambia, or Malawi. Komla Dumour covered some of the biggest stories in Africa, including the 2010 World Cup in South Africa, the devastating Westgate Mall siege in Kenya in September 2013, as well as the death of iconic anti-apartheid icon Nelson Mandela. Arise, Dumour was not shy of sharing his experiences and knowledge on African journalism. He participated in the TEDx program where he gave an inspiring talk on the African story and his passion for unparalleled coverage of Africa. Now look, I'm incredibly proud to be a Ghanaian. My grandfather composed Ghana's national anthem. But in 1957, in 1957 when Nkrumah said to my grandfather, who was a music teacher at the time, that we need a new national anthem. My grandfather wrote Ghana's national anthem. He How graduated with a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology and Psychology from the University of Ghana and a Master's in Public Administration from Harvard University. He is survived by his wife, Kwansema Dumour, and their three children. He will definitely be missed. May he rest in peace. I want to take a short break now. Coming up, it's the sports news. And coming up in sports, Ambrose Rachier is re-elected as Gurmahe's chairman after garnering 808 votes. You are watching KTN Weekend Prime. Time for sports news now. Ambrose Rachier has retained the Gormahia chairman seat after defeating his close counterpart Eric Adede in the club's election held today at the Nyayo National Stadium Gymnasium. Rachier will serve as the KPL chairman until the end of the season. John Pessa was elected the first vice chair of the club, while Chris Somondi will take over where George Buana left as the secretary general of the club. Registered members of the 2013 Kenya Premier League champions Gurmahia, hungry for change, arrived at the Nyao National Stadium as early as 7 a.m. to vote in the officials for the next two years. The security situation was well taken care of in and out of the stadium. 
Those who try to show their might were well taken care of by the tight security at the stadium. After the day's voting, Ambrose Rachier won the polls by bagging 808 votes to Erika Dede's 445 votes. A former member of parliament, John Pesa, took the first vice chairman's position with 842 votes, beating Faizu Ching, who had 384 votes. Chris Omondi gave TJ Koriko a run for his money, winning the secretary general seat with 826 votes. Ronald Gala won another term as the Gormayas assistant secretary general. Gala was up against two opponents in John Ocheng and Henry Opondo. He garnered a total of 486 votes. Outgoing secretary general George Buana is optimistic of changes with the new office. So it's time for somebody else to come and also continue the good work that uh, we've been doing. Mm. Cleofas Okuku clinched the assistant treasurer's post and challenged while Jack Roy sell through and opposed in the assistant organizing secretary post. There were as well easy pickings for George Ongundi who bagged the assistant senior vice chairman's post and challenged as was the case with the senior vice chairman's post which was won by Francis Osuna. Nicholas Mudimba KTN Sports today. Soccer players in the country have been linked with moves to foreign leagues, with the Middle East being the most common destination. But funny enough, many of them don't get to stay with their newfound clubs for too long, or many even struggle during the trial stages. So what could be the problem? Is it poor soccer standards, or is it that our players do not thoroughly go through their contracts? It is every local footballer's dream to play abroad and join the highly paid ranks like Southampton's Victor Nyama, Ajaxios, Denis Oliech in Europe. The Kenya Premier League has grown in leaps and bounds and now attracts players within the region, thanks to Pay Channel Supersport beaming the local league live. They are able to get their own DVDs at the end of every match and share with the scout. However, it is this success that seems to be a double-edged sword of sorts. Players are now entering into dubious deals with agents to play in Arab leagues in search of short-term petrodollars. We'll try and get uh, um, our officials visit the clubs and inform them of the laws of the game, which is uh, crucial, and also the contractual obligations between the club and the player. Sam Machuha, one of Kenyan agents licensed by FIFA, has exonerated himself from blame and lays the blame squarely on crooked agents. I've dealt with uh, a player called Tom Huddleston, who is at um, now Hull uh, FC in the UK. The problem with our players, in a way, was a player who is very young, breaks through the first team of, the, of their club, and they end up being, say, the top uh, scorer or the best player in the Premier League, and all of a sudden, all the expectations are he has to go to Europe. There are Kenya Premier League clubs officials who are notorious for openly flouting FIFA rules. Could this be one of the reasons why Kenyan players have failed to flourish in foreign football leagues? From the ages 15 up until their 20s, most of our players tend to learn very little, if anything at all. Harambe Stars and FC Leopard striker Alan Wanga is one of the biggest names in the local league. But when he left Kenya for Angola as a replacement for Angolan striker Manucho, who was headed for Manchester United, it seemed it was only a matter of time before Wanga followed suit. But after playing in Vietnam and Azerbaijan, he came back home. Yeah, it was tough for me in terms of uh, maybe the language. Yeah, we are not yet there, but uh, I believe we are, we are improving and uh, we'll reach that level. Victor Nyama, the national soccer team, Arambe Stars captain, had a solid soccer pedigree. And experienced youth coaches, therefore, the transition to top flight football in Europe was smooth. For KTN Weekend Prime Sports, I'm Hassan Juma. Right, we've come to the end of our bulletin. So much feedback regarding the two interviews we had on the banning of the film, The Wolf of Wall Street, and of course our discussion on Checkpoint. I just want to sample one each. Brian Okello, we'd asked whether we would ever have the face of Kenya and all the appointments that are made in the country. Brian Okello, you say never, unless tribes are made illegal and speaking in your mother tongue made a capital offense. 
and there was so much more coming in. I just don't have the time to read that. But I also want to take a look at uh, some of the feedback that you've been giving on the banning of that film. Um, here's one. Uh, let me try and find that. Uh, the PM, you call yourself. You say there are better things the government can do with those resources for security, for health, for education. Stop trying to be the moral police of my family. Well, those are your thoughts, but do know that uh, they say they are coming out in the course of the week to the DVD vendors into your homes. Well, maybe that's another matter altogether. Thank you so much for participating in our bulletin this weekend. We'll be back with Wilson Bor tomorrow evening, so do stay with us until then. But for now, have a good night. My name is Yvonne Apara.